The Ready, Set, Grow podcast is sponsored by Ag Expert, software designed for Canadian agriculture. Visit them today at agexpert.ca. Welcome to the Ready, Set, Grow podcast, where we interview leaders and innovators in the agriculture and food sector. Today, as always, we have a great uh, guest host, Diana Laternis is with us from Regina. Hi, Di. Hi, guys. And uh, we're really excited. We have a, a great influencer and entrepreneur in the agriculture and food sector, uh, Kim McConnell, joining us from Calgary today. And we're really excited about uh, uh, discussing some of the ag issues that Kim's working on and learn a little bit more about him. Morning, Kim. How are you? Great. It's great to be with you folks. Wonderful. Thank you. So, Kim, uh, we all know you well, but uh, maybe not every, everybody in the audience does. So can you take a couple of minutes and, and give us the Give us some of the history and, and some of your background and story, where you're from, what you've been doing, and uh, we'll, we'll kind of go from there. Oh, great. Well, I'm a farm boy from Hamiota, Manitoba. That's where I grew up, and I'm darn proud of both. Uh, being, uh, uh, after, after university, I worked in the crop inputs uh, industry for a short period of time. Uh, and then I saw an, uh, an opportunity, I guess, and uh, I'm an entrepreneur. Uh, um, I saw the opportunity where there was a bunch of uh, all this new technology that was coming on with herbicides and seeds and stuff. And I felt that there was a need for some additional marketing support. So in uh, 1984, with $5,000, because that's all I had, and the support of a darn good wife, um, we sat up in the basement of the, of the house and uh, we set up a little um, marketing communications firm. Uh, over the years, we grew, we attracted great people, we attracted great clients, we grew. Uh, in, uh, in, in 2002, um, merged my operation with another operation and we formed Ad Farm. And the, real, um, uh, the reason to do that was to uh, see if we could have the critical mass and let's see if we could go after the U.S. operation or the U.S. market. And, uh, and that's what we did. And we, uh, we uh, was a lot harder than we maybe thought was going to be to, uh, for Canadians to crack into something like that. But we, uh, we made it and we grew. And, uh, and then in 2007, I turned 50. And uh, that was kind of a, a, a funny thing. And I, it made me start thinking. I said, you know, I'm in a very enviable position. I have good health. I have good lots of energy. I have a great family. I have great connections. And I probably really don't need a paycheck. I, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to run the company anymore. So uh, so then I sort of put things to the side. I still had a relationship with Ad Farm, And I started uh, just doing things that flowed along my two passions in life. And, um, and b- b- besides my family. And that would be uh, the entrepreneurial spirit and helping young, fast growth entrepreneurial organizations grow. Uh, I made enough mistakes over the years. I'm sure I could uh, maybe help a few things in that regard. And the second one was uh, I'm passionate about our agricultural industry. And to be quite honest, folks, I think we we are underperforming to our potential. And I thought, well, if there's anything I could do to maybe advance some of those things, because really everybody I knew either had a job they had to work with or else they were out hitting golf balls every day. And I didn't really want to do either one of those. So that's when I started doing some of these other things. So I, uh, I got to do, uh, been able to work in the last 14 years on some really neat projects, uh, little things, and uh, uh, some are short, some are longer term. Uh, today, I sit on a number of corporate boards throughout North America, a uh, number of industry-related initiatives, and I get to mentor some really uh, wonderful people. And, uh, and I learn more from them than they probably learn from me. But by golly, we have some fun doing it. So in a nutshell, Joe, my, uh, I get to play every single day. And my version of playing is maybe a little different than some others. But I, uh, it's, it's fun to be. It's been a heck of a journey. That's awesome. Um, Kim, you know, being the, the, the founder of Ad Farm. And, they founded, you know, one of the founders. Remember, one we of brought the founders, her together. Yeah, yeah, one of the founders of Ad Farm and, you know, working for some of these great egg companies. Can you share some of the memorable stories you have in terms of the startup and growth of the business? 
Uh, yeah, I started, remember I had no, I had no clients whatsoever. Uh, I was uh, in my early twenties. Uh, nobody knew who Kim McConnell was. And, uh, and I was talking about something that many people didn't have too much of understanding at all with. Uh, so, you, you know, just on that, Dinah, what, what I did was I would read the newspaper. Okay. And, and I would read and I would, I would hear, I would read about a company that had either had what I thought would be an opportunity or a challenge that was standing in front of them. And then I would, uh, I would phone them up and I would say, you don't know, a phone up as high up the organization as I could reach. I'd say, you don't know, know me. I have an idea for you. I would like 10 minutes of your time. Could I buy you a cup of tea? That was what I said. Now, 10 minutes, idea. Oh, people can't resist an idea. 10 minutes, sure, they could find something. And tea could be tea, coffee, lunch, whatever. It didn't really matter. So I'd get in and I'd bring this newspaper with me and I'd say, well, this is what I'm seeing. And I think if, if I've captured this right, you have an opportunity or a challenge. Did I get it right? most cases I did. And then they'd say, well, I think I could solve that by these are a couple of little things that I would do. But, whoa, I promised you 10 minutes. I'm not going to go over that. Uh, I've, if this is interest, I'd love to come back in a couple of weeks and flesh this out. And pretty well, always they would say, yeah, this is good. You're on the right track, but you're talking to the wrong guy. You should talk to Joe Dales or you should talk to some, you know, up the chain. So as a result, I got in. And once you get in the door, then over service the heck out of them, provided whatever else it was. And then you got a chance to do another one. So that's really how we got started. And, you know, as we got bigger and bigger, we'd have people that were out talking to people and they'd say, well, we need we need a better brochure or better video or better PowerPoint. And I went, no, no. What you need is a better idea. And you need to go in and be able to talk to them about the idea you would help to make their business better, not about all about you. So those are some things that we that we instigated to, to help us grow and to be able to go from that. So that was kind of kind of fun. And then of course, you know, when you surround yourself with people that are really good, because you know, I'm, I only have grade 12 English. I can't draw a stick, man. I'm basically computer illiterate. Uh, you know, you have to surround yourself with people that are better than that. And when you do that and give them the opportunity and you get great clients, then we grew with our clients as much as anything. So that was basically how we did it. And of course, we had some fun and interesting. Oh, we got to do some neat projects because we brought some new ideas to the plate. You know what I mean? What a terrific uh, way to start. I, I, I love that, you know, customer centric approach to, you know, basically cold calling. Um, uh, what a great tip. We, we work with a lot of entrepreneurs. A lot of entrepreneurs will see this video and so on. Um, the, the, if you can relate back to them, they don't have anything, right? They maybe have an idea on their business model. Uh, they're, they're, very low budgets as far as for marketing and, and sales. Um, what are a couple of tips or, or thoughts if, you know, for those entrepreneurs, um, you know, along the same lines as you just articulated, you know, what would you do if you were starting out today and you're, you're 28 and you've got a cool, a cool new product, but that's about it. No other resources around you. What, uh, how would you get started? Do you have any branding or marketing tactics that have worked for you over the years that are, you know, kind of secret sauce? Well, J Joe, I'm a positioning guy. Okay. So let me, let me, let me back up and explain what I'm meaning here. As a, as a kid, I used to play lots of hockey and uh, being from a small town, uh, it didn't matter whether you were good. Uh, if, if you didn't play, we didn't have enough players and we didn't have a team. Now I played on some very, very good hockey teams. Very good. And I was clearly the poorest player on the team, not, not even a doubt. But I always got the second most goals. Now, what I found was that if you stood in front of the net, you would get more goals than when you were over in the corner. That makes sense. And you know what? The scoreboard at a hockey game doesn't say 
pretty goals and ugly goals. It just says goals. Now, for to score a goal, you need to be in the right position at the right time to be able to put the puck in the net, right? Now, I don't think marketing is a, 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 I think marketing has a lot to do with the same thing. You need to look over the marketplace. You need to look and say, what do you have? Where can you have? Where can you be the best? Then you got to get in the right place so that you can put the puck in the net. So if I look at companies and, and products and, and individuals today, the ones that I think are doing best are the ones that are best positioned. And sometimes you have a technology advantage or you know whatever else it is. You're so unique that that gives it on your own. But in most cases, you've got to determine where you are in that regard. I look, for example, um, you know, when when hybrid canola and vigor hybrid canola first come out, we named that, we did that whole whole end of things, and we positioned it as the highest yielding canola. Now, that is that is that's right in everybody's mind. You automatically think, and you look at the market share that they have today. It is it is enormous. And why do you you ask a farmer why is oh it's the highest yielding? Well, there's others that are pretty darn close, but they own that position. So as an entrepreneur, as a company or whatever else is, I think they need to spend a little more time determining your position and determining what resonates, where are you going to do, and how can you put the puck in the net. And if you spend a little more time thinking about that, then you can get your marketing or your promotions and your stuff like that, but base it on where your position would be. That'd be, that'd be one thing. The other, the other thing is, is that you've got to be able to provide value. You know, in today's world, if, if you don't have, if your product or your service, you may love it, but if it doesn't, if it's not providing value, you aren't, you, you, you know, you're, you're digging in a hole. But once you do that, once you have that, that's sort of the table stakes. Then I think you've got to do stuff that enables you to stick out a little bit to be a little bit different, to be a little bit more memorable. So that's you yourself. That's definitely your people, how they act, how they do whatever, how they go about that. But in agriculture, in a lot of ways, it's still a people business. And, and so you go, it's your products where you, and then, and then be known for something. And, uh, and, and known so that people will say, oh yeah, that's the, what? Probably that's this guy or that's that guy, you know, be known for something in that regard. So those would be a couple of little tips I would do. I would, you know, needless to say, if you have a ton of money, you can do stuff. But usually I would rather you say, okay, the most you have is thousand dollars. What are you going to do with thousand dollars? Just, just because in most things you can do, it doesn't, have, the really important ones don't really have to cost in, get positioned right, get promoted, put in the right place, be seen at the right area, make a phone call here, send a note there. It's a positioning and doing that kind of thing. I don't know if there's any value in that, Joe, or not. I, I love it. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, th those are some great tips, Kim. Because, um, you know, with marketing, it doesn't have to be expensive. And I think that's those are some really good uh, tips for us. In terms of leadership, I know that you, you know, you do a lot of speaking, you've got the Order of Canada, um, you know, you've run some great companies. What kind of things can you uh, relay in terms of leadership skill? Like if people were developing their skills, um, what kind of tips could you give there? Um, well, that's a big question. I, I, I would, I would start by saying, um, you got, you need a network. You need to build your network. Uh, I, you know, every day prior to COVID, every day for 30, 40 years, I've had lunch with somebody every day. Uh, I have lunch with somebody every day. And, and, uh, and that, uh, that, that's, I learned to be able to, that's your connection to be able to meet somebody new, something like that. And I learn and say, what are you up to? And what's on your mind? And, and then they can learn and see what's on my mind, et cetera, like that. And that network really starts to pay off. 
I, I, I have a big network. I work my network. I love my network. Um, I send them notes. I get, I, you, I get unbelievable amount of mail and notes and, and phone calls and stuff on different things. Hey, Kim, I thought you'd be interested in this. Or, and, and, and I work that so that uh, what's happening, what's going on, what's doing stuff like that. Have you thought about this? Hey, you should meet this person. And when you start seeing like that, then they get a network. Because in a lot of cases, that's, that's, that helps you and that's where, where it is. You know, I used to say when I was running Ad Farm that we don't spend enough money on expense accounts. Do you hear me? Do you see here that we don't spend enough money on expense accounts? And what I was meaning is I wanted our people to get out and have lunch with somebody every day. I wouldn't pay for lunch with fellow employees, with family or friends, but go and have some, go and have lunch or something. It, it could be a Subway sandwich to a steak, whatever. It doesn't really matter. I'll pay for it. Because, and, then, and then they would always come back with a new idea or, or something that we were doing and they thought we were a bunch of idiots and they'd say, well, maybe you're not quite as idiot as we thought we were. You know, it's things like that. They grow their network. That's where they get in. I think the other thing is, is that I think you've got to volunteer. You know, leadership, you don't, they don't teach leadership at home, at school, or on the job. Because at home, and well, first off, at school, they don't do it. And at home and on the job, there's always a boss. Your mom, your dad, you're the CEO, you're whatever else it is. If you really want to learn leadership, you learn it by being a volunteer because everybody's the same. You know, you got, you're in the table, you're working on something at the Calgary Stampede, for example, and you're working with the president of a company and a teacher and, a, and, a, and, 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 and the kid that has come on, you get to volunteer and they'll see you and they'll see you. And as you're, as you're going to these, especially in the earlier, you've got to go prepared got to go prepared and say something. What's your good question you're going to ask? What's the good input you're going to do? And the next thing you know, they're going to say, Diana, we need somebody like you on this board, or we need somebody like that. And I think it's that kind of thing. So when I, when I, come, when I come back, I would say, have your network, um, be conscious of volunteer, give back. It's, more, it's a lot of fun to give back and do some of those things. I think those are things that will make you better as an individual, make your organization better, but I think it will also make the community better. Well, those, uh, are, those are great tips, yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to start doing that now. <laughs> Get going. Um, Kim, there's a lot of students out there, and I, I think we need to track more into agriculture and food uh, just make sure we have lots of talent there. Um, I'd like your thoughts and, and maybe ideas on, you know, the future of agriculture in the food sector um, and maybe how do we draw in some of that talent? Well, this, this era, this time, these, this is our, this is our time. This is, this is the time for agriculture and the food industry to shine. We are the industry of, uh, we're a growth industry. We're the industry of jobs, of investment, of economic development. We're one that we're, we're the only bloody solution to climate change, positive solution to climate change. If that isn't a, an industry with a future and people want to get into an industry with a future, they want to get into an industry where they can give back. Well, come on down. This is our place. This is the place to be. And in the diversity that we have, you know, people say, well, I don't want to be a farmer. Or I would love to be a farmer, but I, I can't be a farmer. Well, there's a lot more we can do than that. We know that, don't we, folks, from, from all the technologies and the finance and the research and the whole, you pick, pick your, pick your spot there's so many great things to do so we really do need to do a better job of communicating that kind of a message uh to to the to to the various people and to to young people and to schools and to to old people as well as we are the industry of opportunity to be able to go from there now be, beyond that i think what you know once you get in just get in and figure out where it is and 
you know, I don't know about you folks, but did you plan on being in the division area? Like nobody ever said that I'm going to be in marketing communication when I was a little kid. Yeah, but I knew I was going to be in the agriculture because I love that and love being around. But then you will find your way. And then when you find your way, I think you, you need to be learn to be learn to be not good at it. Learn to be great at it and figure out what that greatness is. I would also say that once you're in there and, and that, then I think you need a mentor. Uh, I'm, you know, I still have a mentor. I, I, my mentor is 86 years old. Uh, and I, and he, he is an inspiration to me. And I think that mentorships can play a great, great role for, uh, for a younger person, but equally as great for the mentor because uh, I get uh, I get to relive some of all the mistakes I did and I'll laugh and say, well, if you tried this and you've done that. So I, I would I would encourage people to get into our industry, find the part that they enjoy, uh, that where they can where they really can be good at. Find that because you, if you if you're going to be good, at, if you if you're going to enjoy something, you got to be good at. It, right. And uh, so find on that. Learn, read, get out, get about. Talk to people, get a mentor, and um, and then go from there. And I think the world's our oyster. Let's get after it. Yeah, um, Kim, can you? Uh, th those are those are all great tips. I just can't believe that you've got so many. And um, when you talk about the agri food industry, can you tell us some positive things that are happening in the agri food industry, and maybe then some of the concerns you have um, about going forward? Well, isn't it interesting that I think it's the Chinese symbol for crisis is also the symbol for opportunity, right? So in many cases, they maybe go hand in hand on a few, few different areas. You know, when we, when, we, when, we, when we look at this whole climate carbon ESG, like that's a big deal on the minds of everybody in, 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 of society. And I think that that is a, is a huge opportunity for, for us as agriculture. We must get our heads around this and what does it mean? Um, yes, we, we, we're getting penalized in a sense on the carbon tax and stuff like that, but we aren't getting the benefit of the carbon credits. And we need to be able to develop that kind of thing. The, the, what we have in Canada, we can be a really um, global leader in this thing. Our, our natural resources allow us to be that. The quality of our farmers and the, the whole network that we have, the technologies we have, the regulations we have, we have all those things. Now we got to turn those from, from expense in a sense into assets and, and profits to put them into a way to be able to get the extra market that people want, to use the traceability that the consumer wants to know. Well, what have you done? Well, we can show them that. Well, let's do that. Then they will want our products more. Will they pay more? I'm not sure they'll pay more. But even if they paid the same and I got mine versus yours, I still win. Then we, we can go from that. And I, I think there's huge opportunities opportunities around that whole whole field in that and that's going to take us working more collectively to get to to do some things then we're going to each have to do our own part don't get me wrong on that but but we all you're going to have to do your part because one bad apple spoils the whole bucket right so so i think we're we're going to have to do a little more of that so that would be that would be one diana that uh I see as, as opportunities that we're maybe not grasping to the full level that we could and, and getting. One of the concerns I have though is, is also goes back to leadership. I, um, I'm, we, we aren't ringing the bell at the high enough levels. You look, you just use that example I used on ESGs and carbon and that. What the prime minister doesn't talk about that, the senior cabinet doesn't talk. We don't have a true champion at the senior level 
of, of government. Yes, we have our minister, but I'm, that's, that's too junior in that. We're not at that senior, senior level. And we need a champion in that regard. We also are an industry. I remember uh, talking to a politician many years ago and, and saying, gee, you got a tough job. How did, you know, everybody's coming at you. And, uh, and he said, oh, Kim, it's not that hard. He said, if you ever get into a bad case, there's always one answer that gets you out of anything. You can, say, you can always say, well, in agri, there's no consensus on that because in agriculture, there never is. So here we are, we're not elevating with the, with the full blast behind us, with a simple, clear, solutions-oriented messaging, not whining, solutions-oriented messaging in a manner that the people will want to come with us and resonate with us. I don't think we're elevating that to the level we could be. And I think that's a challenge and one that our entire agriculture and food industry must grasp. If we're going to hit the promised land, we got to grasp today. That's a really good point. I think, you know, there's your positioning, right? We're not positioned properly. You know, we need to get in front of the net in the high slot with a stick on the ice and, uh, and yeah. be ready to ready to do that. Uh, I agree with you on that. I think that's a, that's probably the number one thing. And it's nobody's nobody's fault. Um, I don't want to look back, but you know how do we how do we take advantage of all the opportunities that we have in Canada to to be a, a powerhouse? You know, um, achieve some of that potential as you pointed out with with things like the Barton Report. And um, I think uh, I think uh, we'll leave this today. We're gonna to have to have you back another day because uh, you've just been. You've been inspiring, Kim. Thanks for for uh, sharing some thoughts this morning here and and uh, getting us all fired up. I think we can all do a little bit better. And and your tips have been bang on for for a lot of the entrepreneurs we're working with. Um, how can people connect with you? Uh, are you on LinkedIn? Uh, uh, if somebody wants to uh, know where they can send you a note or or uh, connect up well uh yes i'm on linkedin i'm on twitter and i i don't i don't i follow lots i don't necessarily uh submit lots um in addition to both of those uh certainly can get a hold of me by email uh, kim at kim mcconnell.ca uh okay. or uh our um my phone number 403-862-5818 um love to have a chat with anybody who's uh uh, wants to take our industry to the next level you got a soft heart here uh we'll go from that and uh and 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 i just joe i i really want to say thanks to you and mike and and diana here for for what you're doing here these are really fun type things and uh and i'm going to encourage the audience to go back i i've followed a number of these and some really good tips so keep up the good stuff here and Thanks so much, and let's take our industry to the next uh, next area. Perfect. The journey yeah. continues, as I like to say. Yeah, COVID continues. COVID shut us down from the face to face, so we thought, hey, let's just let's do these and record them and share them with others because we enjoy them. Yeah. So uh, hopefully, we can inspire some other people to do some uh, some positive things. So that's it for today. Thanks everybody for showing up and uh, watching this week's uh, Ready Set Grow podcast. You can find them on the rh .com rhaccelerator.com website just click on the link and we'll see you all next week